All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another cast by Havoc. Uh, this is uh, going to be a random cast from a random game that I just joined. Uh, I'm joining here in the middle of the action, it seems. Mulkey taking quite a lot of damage on the Vengeful Spirit. Um, let's just go free camera here. All right. Exist in the Storm Spirit, taking out quite a few people. Man, the Storm Spirit is just so dangerous after the 679 patch. It is just really interesting to see how much damage he's been dealing in pro games. Okay, sadly, I can't read Russian, so it's going to be just a Meepo when I talk about Meepo. Luke, who's coming for dinner on a very fat pudge, coming up behind Feta here. Going to fish, but only catching out a creep. They now, however, do know that he's here, so this might be a kill. No, wait, they're just gonna run back. Earth Spirit, aha! What are the new heroes we see coming out in the draft? Alright, so let's check out what's happening here. And Bot, we have a Vengeful Spirit up against an Earth Spirit and a Fire Spirit, it seems. Well, Ember Spirit, whatever you want to call them. In the jungle, we have um, an Axe. Up in mid, it's a Punch. And a Meepo. Funnily enough, Amipo is a hero that you don't really see in pro play at all, just because he is so crazy difficult to macro with. Storm Spirit, aha! Three spirits on one team in one game. Quite a fascinating setup. What do we have here? Oh, we've got an Illusion Rune up. On top, it is a Mirana up against a uh, Temper Assassin. Good old TA. Another hero you don't see quite as much after the 6 of a 9 patch as you used to. Um, I think it may be because Bounty Hunter received a bit of a buff, and as they sort of fulfill similar roles, Bounty just sort of ends up being the better of the lot. The Meepo just dying. See, that is the problem with the Meepo. Oh, wait, they're going on the axe. Caught out here from all sides with the three spirits. Yeah, he's gone. It is. Check it for him. Man, that was just such a quick kill. Um. Oh, wow, and there was a gank up top as well. I think we witnessed the better one of the two, though. I'd rather watch a three-on-one than a one-on-one, -on -one, to be honest. It's just a lot more happening on screen. Alright, so... It seems that, um... Whichever team... Well, Radiant. I'm used to costing team games, instead of just costing random pubs. Um... Radiant are sort of all over the place. They can't really decide if they want to be in lane, if they want to be in the jungle. Well, Dire... I don't know. Oh, they've got a Rubik as well. Dire sort of have their things ready. They've got a tri lane at the bottom. Well, more like a dual lane with the, the Storm Spirit rotating in very regularly. In med, hello. There we go. My mouse reading up again. Quite funny. Okay, TA is now mid up against the, uh, the Axe. Um, thus far, Radiant leading the kill score with uh, 75. Let's check out the graphs for a bit. Mirana, interestingly, topping the gold per minute graph, and the net worth, obviously. HP per minute as well, and the Mirana getting some serious free farm up top. Um, TA trap waiting there for Mirana. We could know what's happening here. Oh, we've got the TA just taking out someone here in mid. Oh, wow, here's a fight. Come on. We've uh, got the three spurs just ganking. They're going to go looking for punch. Won't find him, though. It's just a little bit too tanky for a quick pick off. TA just planting traps all over the place. I mean, it is like a battlefield out here. Just absolutely crazy. Um, the bottom, Dire, just having a bit of fun farming all the creeps they can. I mean, they've just got a lot more map control. Um, Meepo's one clone is back. Problem with Meepo, you need so much macro. I mean, he's going to go down now, and the real Meepo's going to die as well. If you have three brains, it's a good idea to play Meepo. Otherwise, don't do it, man. Don't do it. You just you just damage yourself, you damage your team, and it's just way too hard to come back from an early couple of losses. Man, this Fire Spirit's animations are really something else. Oh, wow, here's the Earth Spirit inside as well, and it is. Cheers for Meepo. Yeah, they got him. Gotta say, these um, Spirit combos work impressively well when thrown together. Fire Spirit is a bit of initiation, Earth Spirit coming in with the damage, and the Storm Spirit for the finish, if necessary. Right, up top. The TA traps just sort of chilling it out. 
coming in, throwing another one behind him. Wow, well played there. Whoever this is, um, what's his name? Faleb or something. No idea. Alright, yeah, they're gonna catch him inside the secret shop. It is gonna be tickets. Oh, and the Pudge with the hook. That was just crazy. Pudge is also one of those heroes that, um, if you've got a Pudge on your team that's not pulling his weight, ha ha ha, quite a lot of weight to pull. Um, when he's not pulling his weight, it's just like a dead weight on the team. Oh, so many fat jokes. It's just <laughs> weight all over the place. But. A Pudge is one of those heroes that can come back from absolutely anything. I mean, I'm thinking of that that classic international game where um, Nobby with a with a fountain hook combo Chin and um, and Pudge managed to come back from the brink of defeat. So yeah, he's, he's quite a comeback hero. Okay, we've got the Meepo just sort of chilling it out here. Storm Spirit giving them a bit of a clone to chill out with. Oh, now they don't feel so alone. The jungle seems so empty. Look who's coming to dinner, by the way. Quite an app name for a Pudge. I wonder if that's like his most played hero. I wouldn't know. Okay, the two spirits. No, actually it is um, the Earth Spirit and the Rubik now farming on bottom. Okay, Storm Spirit might be caught out here. <laughs> Smoke up when they've already been seen. Not <laughs> very effective. They catch up the Storm Spirit. There is nothing he can do. Caught up by four heroes. Well... <laughs> Two and two Meepo clones, so. Alright, and they're rotating bottom. They might actually be looking for another kill on this Earth Spirit. Let's see what happens. Uh, he sees the Marana and decides to just back off a little bit, call in some, some assistance from the Rubik. And what did he steal? What did he steal? Ah, Starstorm. Nice. Not the most powerful ability to steal, but I mean, there you have it. That's the best you can do at the moment. <laughs> Quite a bit of loss in anyway. This loss in animation is hilarious. This guy's so huge with a stick. <laughs> Looks like he's doing aerobic exercises. <laughs> okay, the score currently standing at 13 to 8. Um, Quite a fascinating lineup we have here. Three spirits on one team. You can really see these combos going to work. They really do work well as a team. Storm Spirit blinking in. Oh, and we've got the Storm Spirit zoning out the Pudge. Oh, they've really got the Pudge's number here. Pudge goes down. Meepo trying his best to get out, and they'll probably get away. Um, trying to focus the Marana. This will be the hardest area to kill, as Marana is by far the most fond on the Radiant side. But nothing doing for the Templar Assassin. That just. Oh, wow, these three spirits just zone out everything. Man, this poor vengeful spirit. I mean, Venge can do literally nothing. Storm's gonna take him out right now. And uh, the act is gonna go down as well. I'm sorry, they've just got nothing to offer here. Three spirits taking out everything on the map. This is like a four man wipe, and Meepo is gonna go down like right about now. Ah, he gets out. Where is our little friend? They're gonna catch the one clone. Yeah, they're gonna catch the clone. It's cheers. Sorry, man. Been nice knowing young. Oh, <laughs> wow. How how did that miss? Oh, I see macroing. He can't do the macroing. That's it's too much. Oh, now here comes the reinitiate. Dyer decides. Oh no, the hook of cord. Wow, they've got him. They they destroyed the Rubik. Venge taking the kill there. And um, so low on health. So low on health. 64 health. Oh, the three spirits fleeing like they're trying to melt back into the brewmaster. Trying to heal here. <laughs> They've just got so much speed on their side. Ember Spirit goes down, but that was a very, very favorable trade for the Dyer. Um, am I correct in thinking that the Rubik stole Meat Hook back there? Radiance bottom tower has fallen. Ah. So the um Dyer taking another tower. The random people wanting to chat here. TA taking a tower, this is um the beginning of the end for the Radiance, yeah. They had to 
do a five-man grouping to get this tower, but now it's off. Meepo goes down, spirits are back up, Rubik is back up. Oh, they're gonna take up Avenge next. Blinking in, just, oh, so much damage from the Storm Spirit. He is, oh, just such a dangerous character. I mean, <laughs> this punch is luckily under the cover of darkness. But Radiance Tower is gonna drop. Gonna be the second tier one dropping. Um, where's the Templar Assassin? She's on level 13 already. I mean, level 13, that's like a level a minute. This guy's leveling like crazy. Um, the Rubik, why did he steal? Rot, ah. Also not the ideal ability to steal. There are just mines all over the place. Almost nothing you can do here. Okay, what is this? What's happening here? Marana on the cover of smoke. Oh no! <laughs> well played, Marana solo taking out the Rubik there. Wow, Marana really, really farmed here. Doing a great job. The stun is still down, cooldown. Six more seconds. And the Templar Assassin is far back enough. Pudge is gonna go fishing soon. They know what's happening here. Alright, in mid we have uh, the Meepo probably gonna go down very soon. Yeah. Spirits just taking out the Meepo. It's just... oh. It's a problem with Meepo. You need to macro like, like your Chinese Siamese twins. I mean, there's just a oh wow. And here's another initiate up on the Templar Assassin. Smokes up. Oh, so much damage coming out from the Pudge there. And Pudge and an axe. That is just a lethal carry combo. See, the undoing of this of this uh, Radiant side is that they don't have proper supports. I mean, think about it. Um, Got a Vengeful Spirit, sure, but the Venge has power trains, like that's it. Um, not really building to anything else. Pudge is sort of starting to become fat, but um, I mean, it's got his basic four staff up. They're initiating up on uh, the Earth Spirit, but nothing doing. He got out. Oh wow, what a swap there on the on the um, Rubik. <laughs> now the Fire Spirit in, but he's alone. He's got no backup. Earth Spirit coming back in, but he's not going to make it in time. As long as Radiant go back, they'll all survive. What are them we're just looking at one another here? This is going to end badly for um, for the Radiant if they don't watch out. Marana ability smoking everybody up there. Alright, and they spotted the, the Ender Spirit off the Earth Spirit. Uh, he's gonna go down. That's three versus one. Nothing you can do. What a comeback here from the Radiance. Top tower is under attack. But now these guys are these guys are split pushing. Not really. I have no idea what just happened there. Anyway, um, not the one Meepo clone farming over here, but just sort of chilling it out. And uh, the Rubik is back up. This is going to be an interesting matchup. Marana and a Pudge being followed by um, Storm Spirit. Oh, they've caught out the Pudge. He's going to go down for this. Yeah, he's, he's gone. Trying to follow the Marana. The Marana, however, is slightly more farmed than the Dyer would like. Uh, he's going to get out of here. TA just detonating that slightly too late. And now it seems like the Dyer are grouping up in mid for a bit of a push. We have a double damage rune going the way of the uh, Ember Spirits. TA is extremely mobile at the moment. I mean, you got to get a proper stun or slow off on this one before you can do anything to her. Okay, and it's going to go off on the Marana. They're going to try and initiate, but unless the Earth Spirit gets a proper, proper landing. Oh, wow. Well done there from the Marana. Well done there from the Marana, running along the tree line. Okay, and this top tower is going to go down now to the Dire, unless they decide to rotate and look for heroes. <laughs> Earth Spirit kind of uh, underestimating the distance there, ending up on the far side of the boulders. Rotating bottom. Oh, and they've got the Meepo. The Meepo is down again. Ah, and over here they caught out the Earth Spirit, so it's a one for one trade. However, things still looking promising for the Dire. They do have um, a lot more. Where are we? 
Oh, the Marana is not badly leveled, but uh, Storm Spirit on a high level is just way too difficult to contend with. And this TA is just looking so dangerous. Okay. No real fights going on at the moment. Let's look at the graphs for a bit. 23 to 16 in the favor of the Dire. Um, XP per minute, you can clearly see the Storm Spirit and the Temporal Assassin just are farming everybody else. Storm Spirit is sort of closely followed by the Marana. Marana the only really farmed hero on the side of the Radiant. Pudge sort of catching up, but not nearly enough for it to be effective in this mid-game area. If he can get some proper gold from the jungle or from a kill or two, then he might get really dangerous later on. But now, oh, they're initiating on the Temporal Assassin. If they can take down the Temporal Assassin, this will be quite a little bit of gold for them. A lot of stuns, a lot of signs. Oh, they've got the Ember Spirit to contend with as well. Oh, so much damage coming out from the TA. Oh, wow. And the Pudge commits suicide. Denying himself. There's nothing they can do. They had no full stuff. They had no... Silence, no stun, and um, just teeping out there back to base. Dire definitely winning that initiates oh, that team fight. Okay, and everybody goes back in lane. Meepo rotating back to bottom. We have the um, Vengeful Spirit sort of just, I don't know. What she's doing, chilling out in the bushes, I guess. Normally, you either want to jungle or you want to fight, but um, it seems Venge has other ideas. Uh, maybe she's building towards some kind of item here. Yeah, when the Venge is your main support, it it starts becoming tough for your team. <laughs> Marana just running past the Storm Spirit there. Storm Spirit, obviously, one of the stronger carries in. Um, in recent memory. It's uh, yeah, quite a tough area to fight against, especially seeing how mobile she is. Nice arrow there from the Marana, but nothing doing. She hasn't got enough. Oh, wow, the puck! Oh, just caught him out there, just completely destroying the Storm Spirit. That was, that was incredible. Storm Spirit, obviously one of the most fond heroes on the diet, so that kill is quite significant. Now the team should probably go for Roshan. It feels like that that kind of that time of the game now. Bottom tower. bottom tower is under attack. This tier two is gonna fall. There is nothing. Ah, the glyph goes up, but I mean there are three heroes. Nothing's rotated thus far. Ah, bottom tier two falling. Oh, and the dark, the radiant coming. Oh, and great hook there from the punch. He's really starting to find his rhythm. They take out the Earth Spirit, and now two of the Spirits down in the past one minute, ignoring the tower completely. They should probably have gone for the Denied. The Runic just sitting there. I have no idea what he was going for there, but hey. Leap there from the Marana. They're going to catch up this Rubik. Rubik is very squishy at the moment. And it is tickets for the Rubik. Rubik committing suicide before... Oh wow, and the TA split pushing at the top. T2 goes down. While all this is happening, Storm Spirit is back up inside enemy jungle. Ember Spirit really farming here, just sort of taking the lane solo, getting some free gold, free XP. Ah, oh, see, Ember Spirit is now in the top 3 XP per minute. Let's look at the net worth. Yeah, Ember Spirit and Storm Spirit just. Oh wow, they've got an issue on Storm Spirit again! They take him down, that is so much gold. Another Ember Spirit, if they get this kill, wow. This is this is um, quite a great situation for the Radiant to be in. That was a bad idea from the uh, M from the Earth Spirit. TA is just slightly too far to take down when all your abilities are on cooldown. He's going to take out at least one of them. Yeah, with the Rubik on his side, there is nothing they can do. And they take out the TA, but not after one of them goes down and the Rubik takes out another. So it is a 3-4-2 uh, trade. Oh, and the, um, well, actually 3 for 3 if you count the Storm Spirit in the beginning. But, uh, things are starting to look up. Oh, no, oh, no. Um, Pudge barely surviving that. 50 HP. And committing suicide. Well, now. Entire team wipe going there. Going the way of the red, ah, the dire. So now it's just free farm for the Rubik. Rubik desperately needs our farm. He is um, second most under farm hero on the side of the dire. 
Uh, let's see over here. Yeah, they're just jungling, getting some free XP, some free gold. Let's see the storm spirits now. Blood stand up. Five charges already. He's going for quite a couple of charge items. Very active player. This. He's got his end of shadows, his magic stick, his bottle, and he's carrying the gem. Very useful against the team of the Marana, obviously. Um, capability of having your entire team go invis without even expending smoke. This is uh, very useful. Very useful here to have on your team. Marana, obviously, one of the heroes that is most played off in the 679 patch. Having not a significant um, nerf on her part at all, but um, other heroes that you'd normally play instead of a Marana, sort of just losing a bit of their effectivity. And all the heroes are back up on the map. We've got uh, the Marana back under cover of darkness and the Axe. I know there. Invis goes down. Axe getting some much needed farm. The Axe obviously needing a lot of farm before he can really start hitting hard. Where did this happen? Ember Spirit taking out the Meepo. Thing is with the Meepo, you don't even really need to follow. You can just know the Meepo is going to keep on dying every single time. Storm Spirit blinking out in the nick of time. That was perfect. That was just beautiful. If he'd stayed there half a second longer, it would have been a kill on the Storm Spirit. Pudge is really starting to find his rhythm here. I mean, this Pudge has started to land hooks and not just one or two hooks. Really, really important plays. They can get, um, they get the axe out of there. No real abilities going anyway. Oh, now the Rubik is within range, and he picks up the axe, and it is going to be an initiate on the axe. They're going to get this axe. It is gone. He is just out of here, man. And now they're coming for the Pudge. Pudge is way too fat to kill so easily, but if they circle around the other side, they might just actually be able to catch him. Alright, they're going to push for the tier 2 top. It looks like quite a bit of... Um, Quite a bit of damage coming the way from from the dire. It's just it's amazing how well these three spirits synergize as a team. I mean, you've you've got the initiating ability of the uh, Ember Spirits. Um, they're really sort of just all over the place here. Jungle looking for a pick off. If they can get one more hero picked off, they can push without fear at all. But I mean, if you look at it. Oh, what an arrow from the Marana! Just standing out the Storm Spirit there. Man, oh man, the Pudge just missing us, so just not within range. These two really work well as a combo. Storm Spirit coming in, they're gonna get this tower right about now. They, they should go rush before they go into the base though. Um, if you can get... Oh, see, and that is why you need survivability on your heroes. You need a little bit more. You need the Aegis, that's what you need. If you get the Aegis on um, the Storm Spirit or on the Ember Spirit, they. You'd, oh, look, you'd probably give it to the Temporal Assassin, but the Temporal Assassin player for for the Radiance, uh, for the Dire, is um, is good. He's not dying, he's not the one that's, that's going in and taking the punishment. If you if you give the edges to your tank, you just ensure so much more survivability to your team. All right, so we're not going to be seeing Roshan anytime soon. It seems Storm Spirit just looking for some more farm here on bottom. Like I was saying earlier, the synergy of the three spirits is just absolutely crazy. You've got the incredible um, initiating abilities of uh, the Ember Spirit. Um, really just a lot of lot of zoning out abilities that, that he can do. A lot of damage, obviously, as well, but... Um, yeah, just... just a lot of a lot of debuffs um, happening when, when Ember Spirit casts his powers. Zoning out a hero, making him unable to, to play back effectively. Then you've got um, the Earth Spirit coming in with a lot of AoE damage, a lot of brute force damage. Yeah, Vengeful Spirit going down there to the Rubik TA combo. And then lastly you've got the Storm Spirit, which has always been one of the strongest carries in the game. Not really played much up until the 6179 patch. It's funny, but like since the 679 patch, it's almost as if he's become a sort of a puck alternative. A hero that can really just go all over the map without you really knowing where he is, what he's doing, and just dealing damage as he goes. Alright, so this tier 2 tower is going to go down. There is nothing you can do. Um, all three spirits back up here. 
You can see that this Earth Spirit doesn't really know how to play the hero yet. Oh, obviously, it's a bit of a new hero, but still. He's not doing so much damage. That ability of his can be used to farm creeps, but it's not as effective. You really need you need it for mobility more than you need it for damage. Right, now we're going to see the push on bottom. Push bottom happening right about now. They're just going to farm up this creep wave and um, then hope for the best. Oh, they caught out the um, Ember Spirits, but he's going to live. For the moment, at least. Yeah, and the Temporal Assassin just has way too much attack speed. Way too much damage coming his way. He can blink in, take out a hero blink out, and nothing happens. Pity that none of them have a mechanism up yet. Oh, so much damage! So much damage coming from this Dire team. 38 to 26 at the moment. Only three heroes up on the Radiant side. It is, however, um, a Pudge. And with a Pudge, you can never count out a team. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is going to be Tier 3, most likely. There's nothing that the Radiant can do against this. Tier 3, and they're going to go racks. At least one racks. Maybe a set of racks, unless... Yeah, uh, the Pudge is too scared to do anything here. <laughs> Sword Spirit being very cheeky here. They're going to catch out the Pudge, but uh, he might survive. Oh, no, he doesn't. He just he just melted there. There was literally nothing he could do. Now this is going to be GG. There is nothing they can do. This is going to be Rax. And uh, three heroes still down on the side of the Radiance. One set of Rax, and um, they're probably going to be pushing for these wells as well. That's uh, down. Going to go for the um, Tier 4 Tower soon. Catching other heroes one on one, basically fountain diving. <laughs> that was not well played by them at all. Now they're down two heroes. One of them brought back. See, that was completely unnecessary. Why? Why did he tower dive like that? He didn't really have enough damage, and I mean you could see that he wasn't doing enough damage to really justify a tower dive. He still goes in, dies, buys back that he was basically throwing away his gold. There are better things and better places to throw away your gold on than on a buyback. Alright, the arrow going off Marana might just... Oh, the chicken scouting out the Roche pit. <laughs> Roche <laughs> checking out this Earth Spirit and he runs for his life. <laughs> if you saw a gigantic bug eyed monster coming for you, you'd do that as well. And now we have another T5 going on. The Vengeful Spirit is going to go down to the three spirits. There is nothing he can do. Four spirits now. I mean, if you take the Venge as well, Venge goes down. And the um, Axe trying to come in to save his friend, but he is quite tanky at the moment, but not enough to take out these heroes. Meepo having three clans at the moment makes him very dangerous in a team fight. Dangerous to play against and dangerous to play with. Uh, Meepo's gonna go down almost instantly now. Any kind of AoE. Yep, there goes Meepo. So much damage going the way of the of the dire. Pipe's just sort of trying to duke his way out, hiding behind the trees, seeing that nobody sees him. Oh, and the axe coming back in, really shedding. Oh, and he got the kill of the Earth Spirit! Now it's the Ember Spirit that's in trouble. He's trying to get the Murata, but he's behind enemy lines. The Rubik trying to follow them both, just not catching him out. Rubik, oh, the Storm Spirit obviously being part of the party as well. Rubik coming in. And this Temporal Assassin is so dangerous. He's just got so much damage on him. I mean, look at him. He's just <laughs> standing there, taking the damage like... Well, I wouldn't say like a man, but he's not a man. So, taking out the tower pretty much solo. This tier 3 is going to stand, but um, it's down to half health. There is almost nothing that this um, Radiant team can do. Unless they get like really important pickoffs on um, the Temporal Assassin and the Ember Spirit. There is almost nothing that they can do. Went fishing, but he didn't really catch anything. Oh, and over here we have... <laughs> Temporal Assassin running into the base solo. They're using everything they have on him. They do bring down the um, Temporal Assassin, but man, that guy is just so tanky. Just so dangerous at the moment. Ember Spirit also running around the side. He's just looking for a window to get in there and just kill that punch. But he waits for a bit of backup as soon as his Rubik friend is in the know. Uh, tries to throw off a spell or two. It's not really working for them at the moment. They're just waiting for backup. Storm Spirit is back up. 
the Earth Spirit is back up. It is gonna be a five man push. They take out the Meepo yet again. Russian players. And now they're gonna take out the Pudge. This Pudge just doesn't know what to do anymore. The Axe chilling it out there, just hanging out in the fountain. They've got nothing to do. This is gonna be GG. Marana goes down. And the rest of the team is just sort of chilling out there in their fountain. They've got nothing that they can do. <sighs> oh, they're gonna... Man, this, these three spirits are just completely dominating the enemy team. Why are they fountain diving? I don't understand this. I have no idea why they were doing that. Maybe trying to prove a point that they can die and still have this game in hand because there is effectively nothing that this Radiant side can do. I mean, come on. Okay, Templar Assassin is back up. Templar Assassin can pretty much take this enemy team all on her own. Um, we've got um, Observer Ward over here. Quite a, quite a good spot if you're um, playing a defensive Radiant. TA maybe looking for a solo Roche? We'll see now. Yeah, that is exactly what she's doing. Look at that damage! Look at the damage this thing is doing! Roshan is just melting like 300 damage at a time, at least between 300 and 600 crit. And this is just crazy. This TA is way too overformed. And as soon as this TA has, has the ages, I mean, there is nothing that the Radiant can do. Well, this game has been out of their hands for quite some time. Unless the Dyer make more mistakes like they've been doing with those Fountain Dives, I don't see any way that, that this could go the way of the Radiant. 49-33, to 33, going the way of the Dyer. Only the Ember Spirit still down for, um, for the Dyer. Yeah. There comes a point in every caster's career where you have to say, this game is pretty much over. However, for your entertainment, we're going to be providing you with the rest of the details. Storm Spirit catching the Inver's Rune and going to go up top. Maybe he will be finding the Marana. If you can find the Marana, then... Uh, oh, I see the Axe is overtaking the Marana in terms of farm. Net worth. Um, gold per minute. Interestingly enough, the Meepo now leads. Um, obviously, with the clones. It's just that much easier to get some proper from Yep, and the Storm Spirit zones out the Marana. Kills her almost instantly. This was like one and a half seconds, and... Marana was down. Okay, and you've got the Earth Spirit sort of just running down the mid, checking to see if there's anything on the side. Nothing happening, and now the push mid coming in. Oh, Pudge catches the Embers of the Earth Spirit, and he goes down. That was a free pick off. Good fishing there from the Pudge. If they can catch this Rubik, then um, they might actually stand a chance. Oh, he catches the Rubik and he goes down almost instantly. The TA comes in, but there's nothing he can do. The team goes back. Now it is a, a, a 3 versus 3 matchup. Um, Meepo obviously dying again. Temporal Assassin <laughs> basically wiping out that entire creep wave. Can hear Venge. Oh uh, yeah, this axe is gonna go down to the three spirit, well, two spirits and a tempo assassin. Down goes the axe. Marana trying to land uh, an arrow. Oh, they sort of they got they got the TA, but there's nothing there's nothing they can really do to the tempo assassin. I mean, this hero is just so far. oh well played, well played there from the punch. She's gonna come back and if they can zone out the TA, she's gonna die again. Oh wow, what a play there from the Pudge. That was brilliantly played. And the Temporal Assassin is going to go down a second time. If they can keep them... Oh wow, so tanky. So much lifesteal there. That is just absolutely crazy. Faleb is just dominating this game on the Temporal Assassin. This is... Man. But what a play from the Pudge. you got to give it to that Pudge. He, he has been the saving grace of this entire Radiant team. And um, looking for one or two more pick offs inside the fountain here. They got the Marana when she came out, but I mean, that was pretty much a free pick off. Waiting for the next one to respawn. <laughs> TA going down a second time. But um, honestly, this team doesn't really need the TA anymore. 
They take down the creep wave and um, leave the creeps to do their thing to take down the tower. Mega creep. There is very little the tower can do against a mega creep. <sighs> Radiant sort of just hanging around in their fountain, waiting, waiting for this game to end. Um, I mean, this this game. Yeah. Fountain. Oh, the final tower is down, and now the fountain starts losing its health. Radiance Ancient is under attack. Right, and um, interestingly enough, the Dire don't seem to want to attack the fountain just yet. They want to. They want to prolong this. They want to get some more kills. They want to do a five-man team wipe, then come in and just finish the game. And they're gonna get the initiate on the axe off right about now, and there we go. The axe goes down. This is the one that just takes it for the team every single time. Up next is probably gonna be the Pudge. Oh, they they do lose the um, Earth Spirits, but I mean, oh wow, this Storm Spirit is this thing's just so overpowered. Just so much damage. He had like oh, 200 health and just completely wiped out the enemy team, nonetheless. The Dyer still have three heroes active Storm Spirit, Ember Spirit, and Rubik. Storm Spirit and Ember Spirit being like numbers two and three on the list at the moment. And these creeps are just steadily chipping away at the fountain. Just sort of chilling it out. <laughs> oh man, and Dagon coming the way of the Ember Spirit. It looks like four Dagons, but that can't be right. So I'm assuming that was a bit of a bug. <laughs> Interestingly enough, they really want to do the fountain diving. They want the kills. <laughs> they don't give a damn about the fountain. Fountain is going to go down pretty much now. So, yeah, this is it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this is your game. Probably one more. I'm going to. I'm going to bet at least one more kill before this goes down. Uh, and the prediction. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Man, I suck. And it is... Oh, yes! <laughs> Spirit was down. And the axe goes down as well. Alright, and... Um, that is your game. From two random teams against one another. One side, three spirits, plus a Rubik and a TA up against your Meepo, Pudge, Venge, Marana, and an axe. Um... As you can see, the Axe by far the most effective hero on the side of the um, Radiant in terms of, of um, kills and assists. However, I feel like the Pudge was the one that had the biggest impact. 17 assists, even though the Vengeful Spirit also had 24 assists, the um, Pudge just made the kills that mattered. Managed to get 39 kills on the board for the, for the Radiant. On the side of the Dire, the Storm Spirit just completely... Uh, like eliminating the enemy team. Tempo Assassin also so much damage coming out from that hero. Sanjin Yasha up on both the Earth Spirit and the Tempo Assassin. I mean Tempo Assassin with the Sanjin Yasha, she had a Fez boot, she had Butterfly. No wonder she wasn't dying. Ghost Scepter up, Mask of Madness. Yeah, and the Abyssal Blade. Um Gold per minute, you can see the Tempo Assassin completely outstripping everything else on this game. Um Storm Spirit sort of coming close. And the Ember Spirit not lagging too far behind. But um, Tempo Assassin, true to the XP per minute number 747, she was just a jumbo jet crashing through the defenses of this Radiant team. Alright, this is Havoc casting another random game, and uh, hope to catch you soon.